Hey, what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here. And today I want to talk about Shane McClanahan's mechanics. Uh, he's all over Pitching Ninja right now. He's, you know, throwing upper 90s, touching 100 plus miles an hour. And he's a guy that I did want to break down last year, just never really quite got around to it. Uh, but he does a lot of things right from a kind of traditional uh, high level, you know, mechanical standpoint. But I think what most people really want to know is, is that leap or that jump that he has mid delivery. So that's kind of going to be the focus of this video. Now, real quick, we can kind of gloss over some of the traditional things that he does well, which obviously contribute to how efficient he's able to, to move and how hard he's able to throw. You know, real quick, just kind of glossing through that stable back foot. He has a subtle drift, a couple inch drift, a slight lean into the target where he kind of dips that front shoulder, initiates that forward move, that very subtle dipping of the front shoulder, forward initiation, stable back foot, and then rhythm through the arms and through the hands. Okay, so right there, now he's able to kind of seesaw back into the backside after getting things going forward slightly. Now he's able to drop into the hinge, drop into the back hip. You can see he's capturing that smooth pendulum-like arm swing through the throwing arm. He's leading with the hip, he's staying closed, he's staying sideways. Head stays over the back hip as he moves forward. We'll talk about this leap here in a second. Once he does get into landing, you can see he's able to uncork those hips very late while keeping the shoulders back. He's creating a ton of hip shoulder separation here, getting that entire stretch through that anterior oblique sling. His arm is up and on time when the front foot touches down, right around 90 degrees of elbow flexion and right around 90 degrees of shoulder abduction. So elbow in line with the shoulders. As he begins to rotate, where is he hitting that layback? He's hitting that layback kind of in line or behind his ear. So he's pulling into ball release. He's not pushing with the elbow way out in front of his nose. He's pulling into ball release. And how does that arm unwind? Is he dart throwing it, leading with the elbow, or is he letting that arm unwind out and around in that kind of helical spiral path? Obviously that's what he's doing. He's whipping his arm through in plane. And again, at ball release, where is, where is that ball? Where is that forearm? He's, he's in plane. He's syncing up that plane of rotation very effectively. He's bracing that front leg, again, holding a slight bit of uh, internal rotation or landing a you know, slightly inwardly rotated on that lead foot, which tells us he does have you know, reasonable degree of, of hip internal rotation here. And he's fully you know, blocking that, uh, blocking with the front leg and sending that energy up the chain. So he's doing a lot right, but what about the leap in particular? Because I've heard, I've heard of people now like trying to imitate this or, or trying to coach um, this kind of move in, in certain athletes uh, or saying like, you know, at the very least, you know, if you have a player doing this, who's throwing hard, maybe don't change it. And I would agree with that last statement there that in McClanahan's case, he is throwing 100 miles an hour. He's having success. He's one of the best pitchers in the world. This is not something that I would specifically seek to change. However, my experience is that in most cases, uh, when guys start leaping down the mound, it is a net negative. And the reason for that is ultimately pitching is a rotational action. There's a combination of this linear momentum piece of it. And the linear momentum is that forward move. This is creating linear momentum down the mound towards the target. Ultimately though, you need to be able to convert that linear momentum into rotation, into rotational momentum. If you can't get that linear move into hip rotation, into trunk rotation and ultimately out and around into the arm, into the ball, to into that elbow extension, into that shoulder internal rotation. If you can't convert that linear move into rotation, then that's ultimately gonna be wasted, uh, wasted effort, wasted energy. And so most guys, when they start selling out for this move, so for example, they do a bunch of towel drills, they jump off the back leg, they try to hit a bucket you know, seven feet out in front of the rubber, they end up doing this leaping pattern. And so they also typically end up landing in this extended position. So you can see as he gets to this kind of sit position where most high level throwers, they get in this, this sit, they ride a little bit longer and then they rotate. He actually jumps, he extends, clears the back foot all the way through, relaxes this back, uh, back leg, back into knee flexion, hip flexion and then rotates. So he's doing, it's, it's very 
subtle, but it's very different. Most guys, when they get to this position, right, this is a fully extended back knee. He's extended at the hip. And when guys specifically train towel drills in this way or they're, they're leaping, usually they land in some degree of extension like this. When you're in this fully extended position, you actually lose the ability to, to rotate as efficiently. So there's not as much room in the joint, in the hip joint, to actually clear that true rotation because he's already fully extended at this point. So if he was trying to rotate from this position, he's not gonna be able to rotate from this position. And that's where 99% of guys who leap off the rubber get kind of stuck. And that's why the majority of guys will drop in velocity, drop in efficiency, because they're selling out for this linear momentum at the expense of rotation, at the expense of uh, rotational momentum, which is ultimately what we need to be able to get that into the ball. Now, here's why some guys can get away with it and why he's an exception and some other guys uh, such as uh, Jordan Walden comes to mind as a guy who was an exception. He could leap and he still found a way to rotate is because he's jumping, he's extending, but he's not landing like this. Because again, to, to be able to rotate, we need to be able to get that hip into some, uh, some degree of flexion and that knee into some degree of flexion. And we need to get this, this back foot turned over to some extent at landing. So how does he do that? Well, he kind of relaxes from that point, the back knee back into flexion right there. So he goes from fully extended here to relaxed right there. Fully extended and he just kind of pops the back hip through, or the back leg through, relaxes it down. And so now he's landing with some degree of hip flexion and some degree of knee flexion with that back foot fully turned over. So we'll put up a, a clip here of Jordan Walden uh, doing the exact same thing. So you can see that he leaps towards the target but instead of landing in that fully extended back leg position, he comes back to that hip and knee flexion, clears uh, the back foot all the way through, and then when he lands, he's able to actually convert this into rotation. It's a very difficult move uh, to pull off. There are a few other players that I've seen over the years, minor leaguers, uh, Cody Buchel, uh, one of our guys, Colin Selby. Uh, he doesn't do it nearly as much as he used to, but he had a tendency at times to do this move as well. Uh, so it can work. It's just, in, it's, it's the exception, not the rule when it comes to leaping. And it takes a lot of athleticism to be able to pull off that move, to be able to jump off the rubber and still uh, clear that back, uh, back leg, be able to relax it into landing and get back into that hip flexion, knee flexion state uh, where you can actually rotate. So in, you know, in short, my point here is, you know, should we, should we be trying to imitate McClanahan? I would argue in most cases, no. Uh, if a player naturally does this uh, to a slight extent, they're throwing hard, they're getting in good positions, they're still able to rotate, they're not having arm pain, they're not having any issues. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change it, it's gonna be context uh, dependent. But I also wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to teach a player to do this, uh, especially when it's kind of, a uh, just rule-wise, it's kind of a gray area as well. Uh, obviously, Carter Capps uh, took this to an extreme with his mechanics and they ruled that illegal. Uh, McClanahan is towing that line. He's towing that line where um, it's entirely possible they could say this is illegal. He's going to have to figure out how to rotate from here like most pitchers do. But for now, he's in that gray area. It works for him and he's able to, again, rotate and make it work because of that move from full extension to relaxing that back hip and getting all the way through. So again, just an interesting example of why generally we shouldn't be tracing linear momentum over rotational, but why it can work in some of these uh, some of these specific situations uh, for these particularly athletic and, uh, and efficient guys. So again, love watching McClanahan throw. Great example of efficiency, but you know, just a word of caution before you go try to imitate how he throws. Hope you guys got something out of, out of the video. Let me know down below what you think. Uh, are you a fan of the leaping? Are you a fan of just rotating like most high level pitchers do? Uh, let me know down below what you think and also let me know who you'd like to see me break down in the next video. Thanks for watching.